All right, welcome, welcome. Gonna be getting started shortly. We're here with Red Wedding Planner and Storm Runner to start a little bit of a King of the Hill today because things happen sometimes. Sometimes you sleep through multiple alarms, even though you're a notoriously light sleeper. That is probably because you fell asleep at nine. Oh, sorry, five o'clock in the morning, and. We're supposed to wake up at about 9, 9.30. Anyway, let's not get too deeply into that. <laughs> uh, yeah, and we're here, so let's get over to it. Uh, yeah, let me make sure I have this set up appropriately here. Everything looks good. So, today, I was supposed to have a tournament. Ended up not happening. That's going to be rescheduled for next week, so sit tight for that. Um, instead, we're going to have a little bit of King of the Hill action, and I'm... Uh, trying out some new rules i may kind of be modifying them i don't probably not as we go today but just going forward i already think i need to make some modifications but basically i'm trying to create a, a rule system for doing a unit ban style of pick and ban where you actually on top of the faction uh and unit picks or sorry in, on top of the faction picks and bans you also get to uh, ban a couple of units from your opponent's faction and then this is mostly inspired by the fact that green skins right now I mean, they're a strong faction overall, there's a lot of strengths, there's some weaknesses, but especially there are like a couple characters, uh, like Grom and the Troll Hag. Uh, other factions like Bretonia, a good example too, Fanchantress and Paladin, that just kind of dominate the meta in such a way that it gets stale often. So, my thought process is, you know, if you start to eliminate some of those specific problem units that really need to be addressed, because there aren't very many on each faction, um, and in specific matchups, you can kind of play around, especially if they don't have a specific unit, you can play into some tough matchups a lot easier. So that was kind of my thought process. We'll see how it goes today. Uh, so far, just to kind of give you an example of how it's working right now, I just did the standard pick double ban for the Sitting King. Storm Runner's first on the list, so he starts out as Sitting King. Uh, he uh, had his standard pick double ban, so he picked... Uh, Dark Elves and banned green skins, I believe. Uh, da -da -da. uh, and Wood Elves. So green skins and Wood Elves both banned. Red Wedding goes for uh, Lizard Men. Uh, he bans Dark Riders with the Peter Crossbows and Marathi. Um, and then here, uh, Storm Runner bans from the Lizard Men, Chameleon Skinks, and Pterodons. The regular, regular old Pterodons. So. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes, the soundtrack for Medieval 2. Absolutely incredible. Honestly, the soundtracks for all the Total Wars are very good. Total War Warhammer, they've done a pretty good job of creating the different kind of faction themes. I do I think it's a little unfortunate they didn't do as much of that in Game 1, although the music in Game... Excuse me, in the music in game one is probably actually the favorite of any of mine in the series. Like, just the quote-unquote order theme is reused. Honestly, one of my favorite tracks in any Total War ever, and probably one of my favorite tracks in gaming of all time. But <laughs> it is reused for, like, five factions, right? For, let's see, Empire, Wood Elves, Dwarfs, Bretonia. So maybe just four, right? Am I missing any? I'm probably missing something. Anyway, Greenskins have their own. And then you also have the Chaos theme reused for the three Old World Chaos factions, right? Beastman, Norska, and Warriors of Chaos. So, you know, I don't expect them to ever do new tracks, like individual, unique. Even like, uh, I kind of was memeing about Drum and Bass Remix in the chat, but a little bit like, you know, if they made like a slight rework of the same motifs of the chaos theme right for beastman maybe a little bit more of a faster aggressive maybe some tribal beats in there maybe with norska you do some other i don't know some other deal with it and same thing for the order theme right like you could kind of make different sort of sub variations on it to match each faction right like the empire could probably just keep the standard one right um and then maybe you make one for the dwarfs that's a little chunkier, a little meatier, you know, a little more solid. Um, make one for the wood elves, again, it's a little faster, more flowing. Make one for Bretonia that sounds more formal somehow, more classical maybe, I don't know. 
It is a viewer cough, yes. Uh, you can sign up in the Discord if you follow the link to the Discord in the description. There should be one. If not, let me know if it's not working. I can actually put a new one on there. Um, but, yeah. Um, you can sign up there on the Discord. I'll put out a call usually one to two hours before the King of the Hill um, and ask for participants to sign up on a list. You just put your... You know, post in the Discord, they, hey, I want to join, whatever, and then I'll put you on the list and go from there. Super easy. I think we're ready. Cool. Just about there. So, yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it should be a good time. I'm interested to see kind of how this goes. I do think I'm going to maybe drop it to one faction ban. Just because with, you know, picking out of certain units, some matchups will become easier. They'll still, they'll still be difficult, certainly. Like, you know, with, even just with Skarsnik, you know, Greenskin's still very strong. Uh, with Grimgore, with Azag, other lords. I mean, Azag's not crazy strong. Like, Warzag is very strong, but very squishy, right? So, I mean, there's some, some trade-offs, depending on your, your compositions and picks and everything. But let's take a look here. At the builds right off the bat uh, for Red Wedding Planner. We've got Krokar here. Nice to see. Skink Priest, Lore of Heavens to buff him up. We've got some Source Warriors with Shields. Skink Cohort with Javs. Bunch of Horned Ones. Wow, two Horned Ones and Popopox Cohorts. So going for some Elite Cavalry. Rev Crystal to try and keep those expensive, important targets sustained. Regular Skink Cohorts as well for the Dark Elves. Looks like they also took some uh, Cold One Cavalry, a couple of Cold One Knights here. The good old Chilla Sontar, love to see that. Uh, Dark Riders with Shields. Dark Riders with Shields. Uh, Bleak Swords and Dread Spears. Uh, Malekith? No, Rakarth. Ooh, Rakarth up on the dragon. You know, I haven't actually seen Rakarth versus Krokgar yet. They're both like top tier anti large armor piercing combatants, so this should be pretty interesting, actually. Um. Oh, Krokgar could be in for a little bit of a tough time here. He does have more HP and more armor. Leadership's about the same speed. is going to be slower uh, when Rakarth is in the air, but ground speed, I don't remember exactly. Uh, yeah, 45 defense, 55 attack on Rakarth. Krokgar, almost the same. Weapon strength is slightly in Krokgar's favor baseline. He also, same charge bonus? No, 67... And 50, so Krokgar does have a better charge, but of course he has to counter charge with Rakarth when he's on the ground to get that Whip of Agony here and Whiplash. So Rakarth definitely can give himself a big power spike. Um, and he also gets Murderous Prowess while he's on the dragon. So Krokgar is like slightly ahead in terms of base, but then you look at Rakarth's abilities and he has the capacity to be a much stronger combatant. So a lot of this is going to come down to RNG, also, you know, positioning. Stormrunner utilizing his abilities at the right time, right place. Uh, hand of hand of the gods. I almost said Hand of Glory. That's a spell. Hand of the gods uh, from Krokgar here also could be pretty impactful. If he gets a solid connection on Rakarth, that could uh, do a lot of damage to him. At the same time, though, going after the Chill of Sontar with that. Get some extra damage because of the, of the regeneration trait giving weakness to fire. Uh, that does do fire damage, similar to Shem's Burning Gaze, but you can see on the tooltip there, causes major magical and fire damage. Yeah. I do have a Med 2 music, uh, a lot of it downloaded to my PC, not all of it, but anyway... Um, you would have to ban a specific variant Deadly Bunnies, right? So you ban, like, with, uh, Great Weapons. Well, I'll, I'll say this. Missile variations count as separate units, right? So it's, it's, basically goes by the ban rules, right? So, it, I guess, by the ban rules, weapon variations, melee weapon variations, like Great Weapons, I don't know. You know, that's actually a consideration. What do you guys think? I hadn't 100% thought about that, and it didn't come up in this specific game, but that is a good question. I would go in favor of saying that weapon variations should count as different, or maybe they should count as the same, but then again, if they count as the same and you ban, like, let's say, Marauders, 
then you're basically taking out their entire cheap infantry ability. And is that actually good? Uh, probably in some situations, yes. So maybe I'll count them as different just for the sake of not going too ham on that. But really, in terms of weapon variations, like, realistically, which ones would you actually ban would be my question. Maybe Centigors would be one um, that you would see banned in some matchups, but... Yeah, I'll probably count weapon variations as different now that I stop and think, actually think about it. That's a good question. <laughs> uh, yeah. <clears throat> nice little uh, crossfire here. So the uh, Dark Shards in range of Red Wedding Planner's Rev Crystal. And we're going to get a big old engagement here on the side. Rakarth dropping in. The Skink Jabs are going to go after him. These Horned Ones are getting absolutely wrecked by Cold One Knights 2 versus 1. And Whip of Agony also used on them, but that does mean it's not going to be active for Krokar. He needs to get over there and start supporting. In the meanwhile, these Skinks are not going to trade great in the front line. The Saurus definitely will, so some pockets will win, some pockets will lose. Same thing here, like the Horned Ones actually end up holding out pretty con uh, admirably, considering the situation they're thrown into. Very unfavorable. The other Horned Ones obviously are going to just mulch those Dark Riders, no problem. Rev Crystal moves back and out of range of the crossbows. Papa Fox Cohort sweep up and around. Um, looks like they took a volley of crossbows right there. But did get into the rear of those spears and crump some Dark Shards as well. So that's pretty good. They're going to need to pull away from that engagement though. Let's see over here. Rakarth and Krok are still just kind of refusing to engage on each other while the cavalry murders each other, but that trade definitely goes in favor of the Dark Elves, cost-wise. Obviously, the uh, Cold One Knight's much cheaper than the Horned Ones, and now with this Power Spike to active, let's take a look here. 806 weapon strength with everything, you know, stacked. Uh, does drop slightly there, but still, man, Rakarth with Murderous Prowess active is absolutely insane. Uh, Krokar's doing exactly what he should do, though, in this situation, which is to avoid Rakarth for as long as possible. Just, uh, take engagements elsewhere, going after these, uh, Dark Shards. Ooh, nasty little overshot. Actually does get on the Saurus Warriors a little bit, but Krokar ping pong between some high-value targets while the Saurus try and hold out. There's still some pockets, uh, left here. This Saurus relatively healthy. Rev Crystal gonna get dropped by Rakarth, though. He dives in. Still on the power spike, all juiced up. Oh, Hand of the Gods just crumps this Shadow Sorceress, not allowing her to uh, participate much more in the battle. Krokar comes over, he's gonna fight the Chilla Sontar. Chili Boy will be able to actually hold up okay in this fight, but it's not like Krokar. I mean, he'll do a lot of damage. He'll take some damage in return, though, and that's really not damage that he can afford to take with Rakarth still being on the field. Rakarth taking some damage, but the Rev Crystal is completely gone at this point. That is a big, big deal. Uh, the Saurus Warriors also ground through most of the Dark Elf infantry at this point, but not quite all of it. And Monstrous Presence, Missile Presence, Advantage, definitely decisively in favor of the Dark Elves, and that's reflected here. On the Balance of Power, another VTOL Breath Attack attempted. Is going to get some of the Saurus, although Krokar is able to mostly dodge that. Oh, man. Rakarth actually diving in, gets on some of the Saurus, then turns around, gets a rear charge on Krocky G. Krocky G here, though, does not want to go two-on-one versus these two kind of high-tier monsters. Going to try and screen with the Skinks, maybe move around, try and terrify away these uh, Cold One Knights. Or, perhaps, rear charge Rakarth, just go straight back in. There we go. Harmonic Convergence, perhaps, from this uh, Heaven's Priest. He notices that the Heaven's Priest is back. Probably has Winds of Magic for that. Does he actually have Harmonic Convergence? He does. And it looks like uh, we did not see the pop, but the Chill of Sontar does get a healing proc there. Rear Charge from Rakarth with Beast Slaver active is going to be a nasty hit on Krokar. Pretty much guaranteed with that uh, charge bonus active. But the Lizardmen still scrapping in this. They are not giving up easy by any means. Uh, a lot of this is going to come down to the single entities in the end, as it often does. Krokar is not looking good in that light, but uh, cold-blooded to keep him from routing here. Maybe there's not actually magic for Harmonic Convergence, because Krokar definitely could have used it in that situation. Maybe he could have pulled things back. I mean, a lot, it's heavily RNG-dependent, right? But <clears throat> little penumbral pendulum here from the Shadow Sorceress to get rid of more supporting infantry, and it looks like that is army losses. Stormrunner taking the win.
And a nice build from Red Wedding Planner. Honestly, uh, the rough engagement for the cold ones, uh, the horned ones, rather, early on, you know, I do think cost him quite a bit. Saurus trade excellently here, though. Honestly, a staunch line of Saurus might have done the trick with just a bunch of skink uh, jab spam. But nice to see the horned ones. Crocky G also really nice value on him, considering he was in a very disfavorable situation. Red Wedding Planner, uh, definitely credit to the, the micro on Crocar, sort of as priority here. You know, it makes sense. Krokgar is the most expensive, most important unit in this army. It, the Horned Ones are also important, but, I mean, prioritizing Micron Krokgar definitely makes sense. Credit to Stormrunner, though, uh, playing very smart with Rokarth, only really committing when he had very favorable situations. Exactly what you need to do with the Dragon. Chili Boy also getting some great value, but these Cold One Knights, definitely MVPs in my book. Getting a really nice engagement on those Horned Ones. Repeater Crossbow is also fairly decent. Yeah, good stuff. Good, good stuff. So, let's see who's next up on the list. Looks like Bob Trash had to drop. That is too bad, but we'll get Doctor in next. And that's good there. Okay, put some music back up here. Uh, here we go. Oh man, yeah. Last night was very, very interesting. I'll say that. <laughs> uh. It's a Pride Festival here in Salt Lake this weekend. Salt Lake City has one of the biggest Pride Festivals in the U.S. And it was popping last night. I mean, we went over to a friend's house for a little barbecue early in the evening. Then we, uh, you know, some more people came over. We had like a sort of a small house party. Tried to go out to some bars, but literally every single bar had like at least a one to two hour wait to get in. <laughs> and there were literally people just partying in the streets. So we kind of just hung out for a while, uh, got home probably like 1.30, tried to go to sleep, definitely could not go to sleep, so often that happens to me on a semi-regular basis. When it does, like, I'll go work out, just because I, if I go, you know, train like I'm getting ready to fight a chaos spawn, then by the time I'm done with that, usually I'm tired enough where I can just kind of pass out. Um, but last night... <laughs> Yeah, I, I didn't end up getting home from said workout until about 4.30, and fell asleep by about 5, so, yeah. I set several alarms for the tournament this morning, but I definitely just slept straight through them, which for me is, like, almost impossible to do. Kind of impressive, honestly, but... <laughs> Going good, Goji. <laughs> was just explaining the whole situation about why there's no tournament today, but yeah. I'm here, I'm all good. It was, uh, yeah, had a good time, but... Uh, it was one of those nights, you know? Anyway, probably should be answering questions here. Uh, let me go ahead and update the map here. Let's go for Cliff of Beasts. Stormrunner is going to go Wood Elves, Ban Bretonia, and Dwarves. <laughs> Just ask Zinch to bless you for endless energy. <laughs> really, though, man. Woo. Speaking of which. I went to uh, an electronic music show last weekend, aka a, a uh, turned out to be a zinch ritual. And of course, witch hunters were called. Did have it broken up. Last thing we need is you know another outbreak of chaos after Neural Girl's plague this last year. <laughs> Had some interesting pictures. I should honestly post those on Twitter. I probably will. But. Uh, I will put you on the list, Loopy. Normally you just, uh, on my Discord, there's a channel to sign up. 
So right now we'll add, we've had to have a couple people drop, so I'm going to update the list here. So we've got, uh, let's see, Deadly Bunnies is up next. Then we've got uh, Spud House. Awesome patron of mine. Then we'll do uh, Falcon wanted to join as well. Rider of Rohan, another great patron of mine. I saw him in chat here. Welcome, good to see you. And then yes, Loopy. So, there we are. Tournament for that new 40k mobile game. <laughs> ah, there's a new more, uh, mobile 40k game? I don't know. I'm not as interested in the 40k stuff, I'll be honest. It's cool, but it's not not 100% my jam. Like, sci-fi I am into, but not as much. So... Nah, it's not really sci-fi, it's more like Crim Dark Space Fantasy, but you know what I mean. Like, it's... I like it. I'm not all about it, though. <laughs> Can't get enough cough. Hey, I'm here to provide. Absolutely. Alright. So, Dactor, uh... Went with the Waywatcher and Glade Guard ban. He went with Empire, so Stormrunner still has option to ban a couple Empire units. Worst tournament host doing? I'm doing great, man. Doing good. Oh. Oh no, Stormrunner ban pistol ears. No, can't ban Pistoliers. Uh, you can, actually, but I'll, I'll be sad. <laughs> uh, my, my precious Pistoliers. My precious pistoliers, whatever will I do? <laughs> yeah, you ice power, you just missed it. I gave a brief explanation if you go back. Essentially, I had a long night of partying and then insomnia, and then working out, and then a little bit of more insomnia. So I didn't actually hear my alarm, which for me, like, almost never happens. Like, I can count the number of times I've slept through my alarm straight up, like, on one hand. Like, wake up, and it says, you missed your alarm. Like, it must have been ringing for, like, 30 minutes, and I was just dead to the world. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. That's what happened. So we'll be doing it next week. <laughs> and I will definitely not go Super Ham Saturday night. Well, if I do it on Sunday. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good times, though. <laughs> oh yeah. It's uh Yeah, one of those times. Things like that do happen from time to time. But it's all good. <laughs> Pretty much. That's how it ended up. And I did have to fight a spawn, basically. <laughs> uh Pretty much. Turns out Salt Lake City has a Chaos Portal. 
<laughs> uh, yeah. Did you end up doing, like, a quick battle stream or something? I saw you were going to be streaming. You know, after the fact. <laughs> I was going to message you back, but... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, for real. And next time, Ice Power. <laughs> next time, I'll for sure have somebody, just in case, a backup, just in case, you know, because sometimes, even if I don't, you know, party hard or whatever, like, insomnia is just a real issue, occasionally, more often than I would like these days, to be honest. So, yeah. Um... Yeah, maybe I'll next time. In, in in the past, I have like set up in in challenge. You can actually set up like admins, right? So I'll I'll definitely do that for next week, just in case. <laughs> nice. That's good. That's good. Oh yeah, chameleons are the most annoying unit. It's kind of hilarious that I on my. <laughs> Twitter, I said, what's the most annoying unit in Total War Warhammer? And like three people responded with Chameleon Skinks. And those were the only people who responded in actually in actual replies. Um, and <laughs> yeah. So then they're like, oh yeah, so clearly we should do Chameleon Skink DLC. Uh... <laughs> Uh, Ice Power. The first game, Stormrunner uh, had li uh, he had Dark Elves into Lizardmen, and he the banned Chameleons, right? Because we're doing a unit ban, King of the Hill today, so that he banned. You can ban two units, and he banned, uh, yeah, Chameleon Skinks and Pterodons, which 100% agree with that ban. <laughs> Those bans. Yeah, I'm trying it out, Ice Power. We'll see. I I don't know if it'll. I may end up doing my next like seasons going forward of the South Sea Mercenary League as unit ban tournaments just because like if this already we've seen some interesting games in terms of sort of different builds than what you'd normally see um, and if that continues to hold up like if I continue to see more interesting games from what I would consider interesting from a build standpoint maybe tactic standpoint I will probably be making this sort of standard practice from all of my competitive events going forward We'll see, though. It's just, you know, the game's so big. It's so hard for Creative Assembly. This is... I, and I've said this a few times. Like, uh, now granted, maybe someone will find some obscure title out there that disproves me. But this is the biggest, and especially once Game 3 comes out, will be by far the biggest strategy game ever made. Just like, in terms of the number of units, like number of individual units, even if you include weapon variations, as the same units, this still has, like, way more units than any other RTS I can think of. Um, and just Creative Assembly's task in balancing all of that with the amount of resources they have to do so is kind of almost impossible in a way. So the way to help work around that from a competitive standpoint is to develop a rule set. And this is done, you know, like in like in League of Legends, you did ban specific uh, characters, right? And in Total War Warhammer, we've already set up faction ban rules, but I really think that on a more granular level, we need individual unit bans as well. If it ends up being that it tilts some matchups, like, way too far, then we won't, uh, you know, go too far in that direction. But I'm not going to spoil what's about to happen here. <clears throat> This special skink was multi-shot in AP, so it's much better. Oh, so the new skinks, that's what you're saying. I actually had I didn't look up anything about that new skink unit on tabletop, but that sounds ridiculous. Depends on how expensive they are, to be honest, but they'll probably be insanely strong. <laughs> Thanks, Eli. <laughs> yeah, I know, Ice Power We <laughs> I, I made a joke to when I was kind of explaining it to Stormrunner in the first game. Like, for example, you could ban Marathi and Manticores, and Stormrunner said, I'm not Ice Power. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, oh yeah, Clash of Clans, surely. 
<laughs> dark shards. Oh, it's true. Still have dark shards. It's all good in the hood. These these state troops have no idea what's about to happen to them. Oh, here we go. So in terms of builds here, you can see that the Wood Elves have gone full Vanguard with Dryads. Uh, we've got some Deepwood Scouts, Glade Riders of Spears, Great Stag Knights, probably Orion? No? Oh, it's uh, the, just a Glade Lord. Male Glade Lord, probably? Yeah, Male Glade Lord. Uh, got Hagbane Tips, more Stag Knights. Ended up being Wild Riders and Way Watchers. Uh, got a Dactor Band here, but Dactor immediately going to get pressure. With these, uh, I might have wanted to charge the artillery crew there, honestly. But the Stag Knights immediately follow up after the Glade Riders. Glade Riders getting into the Crossbowmen. Big old net from Marcus, though, does catch up all of these Wood Elf units. These Stag Knights are about to take a big old hit from a Burning Head. That'll do some really nice cost-effective damage to them. Very expensive unit for how squishy they are, can be in many situations. And there, they just take a ton of heat very quickly. They do get a little bit of a heal. Should be able to come back into the fight. Let's see, how many models did they actually lose? I only lost five models. That's not the worst I've ever seen. But a really nice breath attack coming in here, doing a ton of damage to the silver bullets. Uh, these ranged units are going to open up on the Glade Lord, with the Glade Lord quickly going to come in and start to pressure. Uh, the Dryads do fall apart fairly quickly, though. I mean, it's a little bit of a narrow Wood Elf push, to be honest. And a nice Awakening of the Wood. Not going to do too much damage, but at least, you know, kind of keep those spears locked in place. Uh, let's see, we've got Marcus Wolfhart teeing off on the Glade Lord. Glade Lord right now making a mess of these ranged units in the back line. Cavalry definitely needs to get back there and try and provide some mass so that the Glade Lord doesn't kill Marcus. Looks like they're going to redeploy and do just that. The Rockets, though, uh, are able to be defended here despite having taken some losses. The uh, Hagbane tips desperately trying to shoot the artillery crew to death, and they nearly have done so. Now it gets shut down, but not before the rockets get some pretty impactful volleys off. Uh, yeah, Dryad starting to run out of steam a little bit here, and the Stag Knights have also taken significant damage. This unit back from route, though. Oh, no. Hold up. Don't crash. Don't drop. Somebody's having a hard time. That's okay. Hopefully it'll stabilize here. <laughs> right? Uh, I mean, I, you could sort of consider the Canine Assassin like a, a shade hero, right? Yeah, like I said, Dutch flavor. Not exactly, but yeah, shades are different in terms of subculture, but in terms of kind of stylistically and mechanics-wise, you could sort of make that comparison. Um, Lore-wise, they are different, right? But yeah. You could sort of consider them like a Shade Hero. Um, nice net here. Marcus gets in. The Glade Lord VTOL straight up because nothing's directly in base contact actually getting attacks. But that's fine. It's mostly about the range fire here anyway. And the dragon just gets absolutely gatted by the Empire. So nice defense, honestly. The Stag Knight's kind of rallying a little bit late there. But uh, yeah, Dactor... Credit to him defending this position from the Wood Elf offense. I almost wonder, you know, maybe you take Orion actually with that big push. I do like the, the Glade Lord, but Orion's just such a strong character in terms of self-healing and tankiness. Also provides unbreakable terrors, not going to run away, so could have got some good damage in here as well. Maybe some disruption with his AoE damage Ready abilities, serve, but hey, Sashimi, welcome. Thanks for your membership. Much appreciated. Ah, see Ice Power. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's all good. I'm kind of just joking with that title, but... <laughs> Apparently, it does happen sometimes. You know? It's good to... It's good to be, keep yourself humble. Not, not take yourself too seriously. You know, I, one thing... Sometimes in this game... In, in many competitive games, you can sometimes take things a little too seriously and forget that ultimately we're here to have fun, right? And definitely a fun game this time. <laughs> a wild one for sure. All Vanguard Wood Elves is just always fun in my book. Like it's, you know, a, a lot of people hate the Wood Elves because many people play like a very kind of kitey, patient play style, which is not super fun to play against, but... Some Wood Elf mains do this, which is just, and not even Wood Elf mains, just Wood Elf players in general will do this, and this is definitely a lot of fun, from from my book at least. 
Uh, Doctor, credit to him, does manage the defense reasonably well. Spears, you know, getting ransacked, but also holding up. The, the main thing is, like, all of the melee infantry die so that the missile units can do their work. And look at these crossbowmen, man. Who says you even need huntsmen in this matchup? Crossbowmen are just so cost-effective uh, at 475, uh, just paying out massive value. A couple of them actually doubling up on their cost. Uh, Silver bullets also do fairly solid. Hellstorm rocket battery. Doesn't quite pay for itself, Sunmaker, but considering the how quickly it was taken out there by Stormrunner, it did actually get some damage. My Knights of Blazing Sun also do their part. Marcus getting some nice net action in there. The Dryads, unfortunately, like only one of them actually pays for themselves. They can be very good against the Empire Infantry, but like no missile block chance. Yes, they have some armor and physical resistance, but ultimately they'll just take too much damage. A lot of fire damage here as well, you know, burning heads and stuff, right? Um... Yeah, Stag Knights also take a lot of damage early on. Decent stuff. Yeah, Sashimi, I do. If you check out the Patreon page, um, yeah, it's uh, it's listed there. That's kind of the, the system I do it through. Um, but given that you're also a member, uh, if you do become a patron, I would say... Or maybe just shoot me a message on Discord and we can talk, work something out. Because, like, if you do, like, I don't know, an equivalent amount of the membership plus Patreon, I could probably consider doing lessons for that as well. But anyway, yeah, shoot me a message. We can talk about it after the stream, definitely. Um, but let me go ahead and uh, get next map in here. Uh, we'll do Harry Old Ridge, one of my favorites. Yeah, no Wild Riders, wrong spell. Okay, I didn't see the uh, the spell. Uh, e, the, sorry, getting a little tongue-tied. Yeah, instead of Penumbral Pendulum, I'm assuming what you're referring to is instead of Penumbral Pendulum, you took the Awakening of the Wood, which I do see for cavalry control. Like, I think maybe you expected more cavalry there from what I could see in your build, but yeah, Penumbral Pendulum. I mean, hindsight's 2020, but would have been would have been decent. Um. Honestly, maybe Hawk Riders instead of Wild Riders. Like, they are squish they are squishier, but, you know, you can kind of bypass ground forces and potentially get some cheeky charges into the back line. I don't know. They're, they are squishier for sure, though. And they do also count to your 360 shooting cap, so realistically, you could probably only take two of them, because you had, what, four deep wood scouts, three deep wood scouts? Yeah. Maybe Tree Men also. Or, sorry, not Tree Men, Tree Kin. Freakin, you know, they do have Vanguard as well. They have some armor that enough speed that they can catch infantry skirmishers. Again, hindsight's 2020, but I'm just thinking, like, in that position, you're right, Wild Riders would have been great for you there, but, like, what could you possibly replace them with is just kind of what I'm thinking if they were to be banned. I don't know, what do you think? Treekin, maybe? <laughs> uh, maybe they're not fast enough. They still probably get wrecked by crossbows, too, now that I think about it. I don't know. An interesting one. Ah, uh, Doctor has a little question here. So Dactor is going to pick Chaos, Ban, Vampire Counts, and Wood Elves. Now we'll see what Deadly Bunnies picks. Beastman, nice. Dog Beast, yes, yes, yes. I'm so excited for the Beastman DLC, guys. Like... They've been sort of tinkering with horde mechanics for a while, um, and different different sorts of things. Uh, I look back at uh, actually the Amazons for Troy, like there where you got like a one time bonus for looting each settlement, like a unique, not maybe not necessarily unique, but a large like substantial one time bonus for looting different settlements. I would love to see that as a general mechanic for all of the Beastmen factions. 
um, to where that would actually help you have an economy as well, where you actually get like a substantial amount of money um, and maybe some secondary or tertiary resources. Um, Santagors, Minotaurs. Ooh, that would be rough. I mean, you still get Saigors. Saigors are really good in this matchup, actually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I might get a cow costume. Would that be interesting if I did a webcam stream with a cow costume? Oh, Belisarius was a cool one for sure, Hammond. Belisarius, oh, that's a, you bring up a good one. Um, yeah, having him be able to, uh, you could like choose to gift units back to the, the Byzantines or eventually at a point just like take them for yourself. And kind of related to that, if you look at the White Tiger, what is it? I forget his name. The, the mercenary, the White Tiger in Three Kingdoms. He has a sort of similar-ish mechanic where you get mercenary contracts for people and then when you conquer a, a relevant city, you know, from that faction that they gave you the contract to fight, uh, you can actually give it to the, the, the faction that gave you the contract, right? Sort of like you're taking the city and handing it over to them and getting paid for it. Um, and there's also, I think there was like a specific direct target city that if you got that, you'd get like extra bonus rewards and immediately finish the contract. Almost like the WA system, right? Something like that would be perfect for Southern Realms. Um, for a more like diplomacy-based sort of horde style. Um, like Nakai, the way they implemented his doesn't work great because that sort of sub-faction that you have always gets attacked and gets declared on by your allies and everything else. So it'd be better if you could just gift it to your allies, rather. Um, and, you know, they, they created that technology, at least in Three Kingdoms, so, yeah, maybe. For Beastmen, though, it's, it makes more sense just to, you know, blow it up and you get a bonus for blowing up. And especially for, like, obviously, faction capitals, um, or it, other important cities, maybe, if they have specific unique buildings built there, you'd get even more rewards. So maybe you're kind of incentivized to, like, wait and build it, wait for certain cities, at least, to get built up. That you can get then go explode them although the ai is kind of terrible at building the unique buildings <laughs> anyway yeah i think i think the white tiger came out after nakai if i'm not mistaken like i think it was an iteration of that system them sort of trying different things out same hammond i know right same i'm in i'm in the same boat <laughs> all right so uh, Beastmen ban uh, Horsemen and Chaos Warriors. Uh, yeah, Dactor, Dactor, sorry, bans Centigors of Throwing Axes and Spawn. And I believe specifically he was banning the regular horsemen, right? I will clarify. Add Marion Bird so I can rename the Marion Bird flavor. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I like it so far. It's, uh, it takes a little bit of getting used to, but... Okay. Cool, cool. Ooh. 
Cool, cool. Yeah, Southern Realms, I have a lot of ideas. I definitely think they will do it. Like, I can't see them not doing it. We'll see. I mean, they have surprised us before. A lot of people thought for sure we would get Araby. I, I, Araby was one that I was like, mm. I honestly did think we'd get Southern Realms in game two. But now that I think about it, like, if they want to really play up the mercenaries as much as possible, you've got to have Ogre Maneaters in there, right? Like, Ogre Mercenaries are a pretty prevalent thing in the lore, right? So, I guess they... It, maybe because of that they're like hey let's wait until we make the ogres <laughs> you know uh, that's just pure speculation on my end but that's like one of the main reasons i could think of that they're not doing that and i think ogre man eaters are also available for the empire if i'm not mistaken the the mercenary ogres but we'll see if they ever get added for the emperor i, I would be a fan of that have some monstrous inf infantry options for the Empire. Probably wouldn't be super cost-effective, but it'd be fun. I, I like variety. It's the spice of life, after all. Anyway, let's have a look at these builds here. For the Warriors of Chaos, Frontline of Forsaken is risky business. Uh, very squishy, can be at least, with only 20 melee defense, pretty low HP. Sigvald, though, can tank for sure. Sorcerer Lore of Fire. We've got Horse Maestros. Four Horse Maestros. And, uh, yeah, a couple spawn as well. Decent build for the Beastmen, Ungor Herds, and some Ungor Raiders. A couple of Centaurs with great weapons here. I do have the Eyes of Morsleep. Love that pick in this matchup. Kazrak, the one eye, and Bray Shaman Lore of Wild will do quite well. Oh, two Manticores of well, as well, of course. Forgot about them. Super important. But, uh, these Forsaken, I mean, they will clean through Ungors, no problem. Also going to get chunked, not quite hit by the Eye of Morsleep there. But uh, the Centaurs with great weapons and the Chariot characters are going to do a ton of damage to these Forsaken. So we'll see. Right now, Beastman kind of pulling back, trying to disjoint the Warriors of Chaos somewhat. You know, pull them out of position, get them uncomfortable, and the Ungors do engage here. The Chariots now charge in, and look at that. Forsaken already taking a ton of damage. Nice Vile Tide detonation. Throws back some of the spawn as well. Keeps the chariots from getting caught up too much. Nice charge in here from the Centaurs with Grippins. They don't get charged by the Forsaken. Pretty important. Forsaken 39 charge bonus. Ridiculous for an infantry unit. And they do eventually just clean house on those own door herds once the uh, chariots leave. But uh, you can see the Centaurs do actually take some damage in response. Uh, Forsaken, their damage output is super legit. I mean... Probably the highest weapon strength of any individual infantry unit, if I had to guess, but uh, they are relentless at this point, pushing through, easily cleaning the Ungors. The Centigors are not able to uh, really stay engaged for too long, but it does look like they're starting to push back, perhaps. It's hard to say. Maybe they'll be able to just rampage through this entire Beastman army before the Beastman can really respond super effectively, and it does look like over here all the Ungors are pretty much gone. That being said, uh, Centigor is getting in here. The spawn actually acting as kind of mass blockers for the Forsaken is proving to be effective. You can see that the uh, for the Centigors were not actually able to fulfill the objective of taking out that armored infantry. It was just too much counter push. So Warriors of Chaos actually looking pretty good right now. I was kind of poo pooing on the Forsaken earlier. But uh, the Cygord is not making significant enough contact. And the fact that the Forsaken are, you know, fast. And they also have a smaller footprint than your typical Chaos Infantry, I believe. I don't know. I'd have to actually look at that. But they haven't taken too much damage so far. Really nice burning head on the Destroyers of Drakvald. And it's looking to be a pretty quick victory for the Warriors of Chaos here. Forsaken just having an absolute field day on this Ungor-based army. Definitely would have been... Beneficial to have maybe one or two uh, Vestigors here, perhaps. Kazrak, man, he takes a lot of damage very quickly, too. It was pretty surprising. He does have his damage resistance, even. But, uh, man, just that high weapon strength. 160 weapon strength on spawn and 67 weapon strength on Forsaken. That's honestly ridiculous. Land ships, I'm down. I'm down for land ships. I mean, we have a Dread Saurian. Could you imagine something the size of a Dread Saurian, but it's literally just a wooden ship on wheels bristling with guns? I think that sounds pretty cool. I know, right? This is a very Warhammer 1 game. Very, very Warhammer 1 game. 
Uh, there was a time when Chaos Warriors were terrible and Forsaken was one of your only good infantry units. That was when Warriors of Chaos in general was just the worst faction in the game by far. Things have definitely changed. Somewhat. Some things haven't really changed at all, like the units on the Warriors of Chaos roster have not changed. I guess, no, that's not true. They did add Horse Masters at a point, they did add Aspiring Champs at a point, it just hasn't changed at all in Warhammer 2. Uh, yeah, see? That, like, <laughs> I don't know. I like the ridiculousness of Warhammer. Like, it's not too over the top, as in some other fantasy settings. It is pretty over the top, though, and the land ships are one thing, and I'm like, yeah, sure, let's do it. Everyone remembered that they do a lot of damage. They are good in specific matchups, and like here, that was a very good showcase of them. I just skipped right over the value and didn't even show it. That's my bad. Probably one-on-one, -on -one, the Bloodthirster will beat a Shagoth, but with missile support, uh, probably the, the Shagoth wins. Depends on cost, we'll see. Yeah, if they counter-charge Cav, they can get insane value. It's true, as long as the Cav doesn't have too high of a charge bonus, if it's not like, you know, something on the top tier of, like, Grail Knights or Blood Knights or something like that, the Forsaken, if it's like one of the mid-tier Cavs, like, uh, you know, Silver Helms or something like that. They can counter charge and do some pretty good damage. They'll also get punched in the face, but... It's, uh, kind of a bloody trade. Alright, Spud House in the house. Let's see here. Uh, da -da -da. let's go for Northern Chaos Waste. We'll keep it keep it in theme. Hello, welcome. Yeah, actually, the mass changes made quite a few infantry units that before were just not super usable. Better. You know, like, like Forsaken, great, like, lower tier great weapon infantry, too. Um, I need to play around. Skulkers are a unit that's, at times, they have been very good, and if they're used correctly, they are insanely cost-effective. But they're also very micro-intensive and can just die very easy without doing anything. Um, I haven't really paid a, played a ton with them since the mass changes. I still think probably because their leadership is so bad that it's, you know, potentially they're still going to be tricky to use. But, uh, yeah, it's interesting, you know. Eh, they're one of the most in interesting units in the game, in my opinion. Nasty Skulkers. But, yes, yeah, sir. Like, I, like uh, Red Crest, too, are a little bit better from what I've seen. Like, yeah, like the cheaper armor-piercing units. Miners, too, probably are better against Cav than they were before. So yeah, let me actually get some music playing. I need to go grab a drink of water, guys. I'll be right back. Okay. 
Yeah, I'm using Skulkers to help Black Cav win fights with their AP. Yes, and the, the Smoke Bomb as well. Very useful in Cav engagements. Just for the longest time, if they took a charge, and this is probably still true, if they took a charge from a unit with like 40 or more charge bonus, they would just run away. Um, but we'll see. I do need to do some more playing around with them. Hard to get people to want to play against the green skins. You have to tell them, I promise. I promise I won't take Rom. I promise I won't take Troll Hags. Uh, anyway, just looking at some stuff over here on the side. Yeah, exactly. You can use Fanatics and get their value on one cast as much easier. It's true. Skulkers, the only thing Skulkers are better against is like smoke bombing a monster so you can fight it with something. I mean, it's like. You know, the fanatics are not going to help a lot against monstrous infantry or single entity monsters, but yes, against infantry or even cavalry, like, you just get better value from the fanatics. Yeah. Yeah, Spider Riders is a pretty classic combo because you get the poison plus the smoke bomb. It's not quite a full slow because there actually is, I think, a cap of like 90% speed debuff, I want to say. Um. Excuse me. Um. In fact, we're going to ban Chameleons and Pterodons. <laughs> Spudhouse bans both Marauders and Marauder Great Weapons? That's really interesting. Okay. Skulkers are strangely good versus Tomb Scorpions. I think because the Scorpions, their stats are kind of low-ish, if I remember right. Like, I really... What do they have? Like, 30 attack, 30 defense in, in like, the 30 to 40 range, I think, on both. Which is within the range where Skulkers can make pretty... Um, consistent contact on them. The issue is that they're going to get terrified pretty quickly because Scorpion will attack, will apply like attack by rear and attack by side debuff at the same time practically with its animations. Uh. Yes. Um, this is Medieval 2 music to answer that question from Crazy Cat. Um, yes then. Uh, I'm guessing it's how you pronounce that. Um, yeah, so in multiplayer, because there's no skill buffs from lords, right? Like, that's one of the primary ways that you get power in campaign is from either techs or, you know, skill tree buffs from your lords going on your units. Um, in multiplayer, that's not a thing. And, like, your lords, for example, are a lot lower in power level because they don't get the stat buffs. There, you know, the, some of the items aren't available. The items that are available will just add the, you know, activatable effect, and not the stat buff in and of itself. So the balance is, it, it'd be like, yeah, it's different. It's definitely very different um, from campaign balance, and it's why a lot of the times when you see these kind of minor stat tweaks. Um, on units, whether it's sometimes they'll just do multiplayer cost. Sometimes, if they think it's too expensive in campaign, they'll change the cost overall. Um, but yeah, a lot of times you see like you know plus 12 HP per model or plus five melee defense or whatever these kind of incremental changes on units. Um, a lot of that is driven by multiplayer. So yeah. <laughs> um, and the, one of the reasons why we have the rule sets, like tournament rule sets in terms of what armies you can pick, is to restrict, you know, doom stacking and try and create more sensible and cohesive armies. Honestly, in campaign, I am a, in favor of them introducing some kind of hard cap system where, almost like with the Tomb Kings, where you have to have a certain number of certain buildings to be able to recruit certain units. Like, if you have, just as an example for the Empire, you can only recruit one steam tank per top tier, whatever, cannon foundry you have, or whatever it is, you know, you can only recruit one rogue idol per 
highest tier of whatever building that requires to recruit, right? I don't know. Just a thought. I know there's some mods that do that, but I, I think that'd be a good way for them to address doom stacking in the higher difficulty levels. Um, I don't know. Maybe some people don't think that doom stacking is actually a problem, in which case, you know, more power to you. I'm not going to tell you how to play a single player game. <laughs> You know, whatever way you enjoy playing your single player game, whether that's ultra modded with SFO, full vanilla, you know, legendary cheese, however you'd like to do it. There's no wrong way to do it. Just for me personally, I don't enjoy you know, certain things. But look at this army, man. Three chosen great weapons. Uh, one Chaos Warrior with great weapon, one Chaos Warrior. We've got Sigvald, we've got a Sorcerer of Metal, and some Marauder Horsemen, and Horse Masters mixed. On Lizardman's side, Mazdamundi. Oh man, it should be interesting. Mazdamundi, anti infantry magic is going to be super important here. Uh, the banishment and ruination of cities, RNG will determine a lot. And placement, of course. Razor Dons. If you can protect these Razor Dons, they will destroy the Chosen. That's pretty much how it works. He's got Fire Leech Bullas, and he's also got the Colossodon Hunters. There's not too many large units for them to go after. There's no Shagoths or anything, so they are actually going to be less useful than probably the Anti-Infantry version would be here, all things considered. But this is pretty deep. Three chosen great weapons. Yes. Yeah, I, I would love for it to be an option. Warden, I I would. Uh, Warden, yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> I would be in favor of that. If it's a, something you can toggle on and off. I, I like having options, you know, more options for players to play the game how they would like. Built into the base game, I think, just benefits everyone. And I know there can sometimes be issues with that. Like in Rome Remastered, there are some issues, I think, still... We're trying to get some of those bugs worked out with that system, but... Oh man, the Fire Leech Bola's coming in for a little attack here. They're gonna start to make their presence felt. They don't do the most armor-piercing damage, but they will detonate these Chaos Warriors pretty effectively. Uh, you can see that uh, there were some Skink Skirmishers here, not Chameleons, just the regular blowpipe, cheap blowpipe bros. They get some good damage in. The Chaos Warriors are gonna start to come forward. Mazdamundi setting himself up front and center. Ready to bunker bust these Chosen. Uh, the Chosen do not actually have a charge order on him yet, but I'd imagine, yep, they start to get that. Uh, Mazdamundi probably going to side shot through this unit here. He does pop the Banishment maybe a little early. Let's see where it goes. Doesn't look like it's going to catch up too many units here, but these Chosen kind of do pull back a little bit into the danger zone. This unit of Chosen, though, going to get the charge on this source where that'll be very devastating. You can see Mazdamundi here as well. Plague of Rust on him, and he's stopped up an unit of Chosen Great Weapons. This is going to be a huge amount of damage on Mazdamundi. He's got to get it out of here ASAP. Huge amount of bursts going down right there. Uh, the rest of the field here, you can see Skinks pushing up and around the flank, but it does look like Mazdamundi actually gets routed here. Might just get straight up shattered. Oh man, Mazdamundi goes down in a big hurry. That is a disaster, has to be said. Um, yeah, <clears throat> Mazdamundi getting completely wrecked there. That is going to allow these Razor Dawn hunting packs now get caught up by the Murado Horsemen. Uh, Blizzman taking... <laughs> Uh, backseat on the balance of power, obviously, that was that was rough, man. I see what he was going for there, but you definitely got to be aware in that situation. Try and pull him back. But uh, Jabs come forward. They're going to try and get at the Marauder Horseman here. Big old Searing Doom. Probably going to do some friendly fire damage, but the Skinks are definitely taking up more area. And with less armor, we will take significantly more damage from that anyway. Uh, yeah, the Fire Leech Bullas contesting with the uh, Marauder Horseman, actually. Is the right idea, I think. Maybe they should have been going after them perhaps from the start, but we'll see. Skink Skirmishers right now continuing to try and hold out. It's mostly just like a legion of skinks still fighting here. Yeah, that was that was some damage. That's a lot of damage. <laughs> Look at all this damage. Pretty impressive stuff, honestly. Chosen with great weapons right now are pretty legit, honestly. Like you don't see them super often, but with the mass changes, they actually can get a decisive amount of damage out very, very quickly. It used to be they would just get consistently knocked over all the time by monsters, and they could actually, couldn't actually get attacks, but now, they scary.
used to be that the only real viable chosen, in my opinion, <laughs> it happens happens to me too frequently. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, in fact, I think Rider Rohan, last time we played in our patron practice session, just completely steamrolled my face a few times. I was not not in shape to be playing, to be honest. But anyway. Uh, speaking of which, Rider Rohan going to be up after Falcon, who is next. Let's see here if we've got him online. I'm very surprised no one banned Sigvald, considering he's, uh, you know, so prevalent right now. Undead is wind dead. Yeah, well, elite infantry can work. It can. Especially when you're in a situation where you've banned some counters to them. Up against Lizardmen? What would I ban? Uh, like, uh, sorry, if I'm playing Lizardman against Chaos, I'd probably ban Sigvald, and then ban a Lore of Metal caster, like Lore of Metal hero caster. I think that's what I would do. It, you'd kind of force them into taking, like, either Big Bird or a Lore of Metal, because, like, Chaos, you need Lore of Metal there. Like, Javelins, um... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe, like, what would you guys... I'm curious. Like, from Lizardmen against Chaos, pretty even matchup. In terms of actual dangerous units, I don't know. I feel like it's not worth to ban any Marauder Horsemen, because they can still take whatever combination to get, you know, up to six. Um, I don't know. I would I would ban Sigvald personally, and then maybe Chaos Warriors with great weapons. They're pretty cost effective against a lot of your troops. I think Spudhouse banned both of the Marauders there, and I kind of get that, you know, forcing the uh, Chaos player into a very narrow build. But yeah, interesting. Kind of changes the way you approach certain matchups thinking about what units to ban, which ones to not ban. And eventually, I'm sure if I continue to use a similar rule set, that there will be sort of a meta that develops around which units you ban. And in certain matchups, it's pretty easy. Like, anybody against Bretonia... Oh, can't see the lobby. Oh, sorry, Falcon. Um, Let me go ahead and get you my friend code here. You can add me on Steam, and then you should be able to see the lobby. There we go. Oh, you got it. Okay. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. Well, you can have me on Steam anyway if you want. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's see. We'll switch to Pillar of Bone, a.k.a. the Bone Zone, or Boner Town. Quack! What's up, Rubber Duck of War? Good to see you. Always a pleasure. You know, Rubber Duck of War, I have, I've had an idea I've been meaning to talk to you about for a while. Um, remind me, if you shoot me a PM after the stream, if you're still awake, of course, remind me, I have a, a potential... I, I, I have an idea... I'm curious to get your thoughts about it. I still need to talk to some other people as well, but potentially, uh, you know, a little bit of something we could collaborate on. Meow. 
Oh, my kitten is currently sleeping in the other room, very soundly. A very active morning, skittering around like a... Like a bobcat. <laughs> cool, high elves, looks like, and... Let's see, we'll wait for the unit bands. Ban Marauder Horsemen. Okay. An idea, yes, I have an idea. I guess you could ban both Marauder Horsemen and Throwing Axes, or, you know, Horsemen and Horse Masters, or Throwing Axes and Horse Masters. Any combination of the two of the three would limit them to only taking four skirmish cavalry, which could be good. <sighs> yes, a little, a little sleepy still, but we're getting through. Uh, let's see, how many more games have we got? I'm probably not going to accept any more on the list, but we've got two more games after this. Ride of Rohan and Loopy to close us out. Man, the Hell Cannon? Ah, yeah. Hell, I was going to say Hell Cannon, and it does look like Fel that's what Falcon went for. Shagoth is also one that, I don't know. It's not as good as it used to be, but you, you could potentially ban it. that still here. Um, Chaos Knights, perhaps... I'm just thinking of, like, really high armor, dangerous power units, because that's probably what's most likely to be dangerous for the High Elves. Alario, nice. Alario and... Hmm. Okay. The Lion Infantry. Okay. I might have gone for the Lion Chariots, actually. But, yeah, both of those are pretty valid bands here. Maybe Lothar and Seaguard as well, just because Lothar and Seaguard are... A great unit in, in literally every single build. Uh, yeah. Yes, indeed. Let's see what they can do. Let me look at something here real quick. Hmm. Neat. Sorry, right, someone's just sending me some messages over here. Yeah, locks them into Swordmasters if they want AP in the front line. It's true. Like, I think that it just... I guess if you don't have a Lariel, the chariots, the lion chariots do become less dangerous because they don't have as efficient of healing. They could still get some healing. Um, yeah, you could also ban the star dragon, honestly. It's uh, occasionally seen in this matchup, and it can be pretty good, like techless star dragon. It's a pretty classic combination, still very good. You know, net something, breathe on it with the star dragon breath with kindled flame. But yeah, Swordmasters can be good in this matchup, as Rider of Rohan has shown me. <laughs> but they also can be a little tricky. No Sigvald ban again, though, from the High Elves. So we'll see if Dactor again chooses to go with the Scion of Slanesh. 
Yeah, me too. I'm, I'm enjoying it as well. I do think I'll make some slight modifications to make it a little bit simpler, easier to understand perhaps, but honestly, it's not super hard to understand. Swordmasters, no problem, all right? I was gonna say, I know Ryder Rohan's in chat here somewhere. somewhere. Did somebody say Swordmasters? Yeah, I think... I think this... Uh, I'm gonna be finishing up the South Sea Mercenary League. Honestly, I might do two tournaments in the span of about a week. And then we'll do the final before the Beastman DLC comes out. I'm hoping... I need to talk to CA still. Um, but I'm hoping I can get at least a copy of the Beastman DLC for the winner of the South Sea Mercenary League. I would also like to get w a copy of the DLC for each of the four qualifiers, which would, you know, include the winner, obviously. Um, and then just do a cash prize on top of that for the winner. I'm gonna do a cash prize regardless for the winner. Um... If I don't get keys for the qualifier winners, I'll do a smaller cash prize for them. But what is this? What are these Manticore wings? Oh, it was like bugging out for a minute there. You guys see that from a distance? The Manticores are like turning into winter Manticores. That's interesting. I've never seen that bug before. Anyway, going on the Warriors of Chaos. It looks like Dactor actually went with Sarthrell this time rather than Sigvald. So a little bit of a change of pace. We've got a whole bunch of Marauder, great weapons, and Forsaken. So a lot of high DPS, kind of wide infantry. Three Chaos Knights with Lances. That is very serious uh, stopping power there. Uh, makes sense, you know, you force your opponent into Swordmasters if they want AP anti-infantry in the front line. And the, the Chaos Knights are going to be great counters for them. We do have Fireborn here, though, as well as some Silver Helms to try and stop them up. A couple of Lothar and Sea Guards, Mage of Life, alongside Tyrion. Is that Tyrion? It is Tyrion. Yes, yes it is Tyrion. Excellent. A couple of archers here as well. Uh, yes. Swordmasters and Tyrion. Is this Rider Rohan? Rider Rohan, are you smurfing? <laughs> I don't think so, Ben. Um, I mean, most factions have enough access to magic damage that you don't need... You know, if something gets banned, you can get magic damage from something else. Most factions. It would be an issue for a few specific factions, but those are... I mean, like, Beastmen versus, you know, Undead is probably a not, not a matchup you're going to take anyway if you can avoid it. Um, I don't know. I'm thinking, like, green skins are very strong, so I don't really care <laughs> about them, you know, getting screwed by not having magic damage. Um... Who else doesn't really have good magic damage? I don't know. 100% <laughs> Rider Rohan, right? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I'll, I'll be interested to see how this goes. I mean, Plague of Rust here on the... Uh, he didn't even blink, bling. Yeah, let's go with that. He didn't even blink Plague of Rust. <laughs> Just final transmutation, which will help even out that cavalry fight and allow the Chaos Knights to hopefully run rampant over the back line. Thinking Tomb Kings. Uh, yeah, I mean, Tomb Kings are already kind of terrible, so is it going to make that much of a difference? Like, would you take Tomb Kings into Coast or Counts, I guess would be the question. I mean, maybe somebody, you pick Tomb Kings, ban a couple things, and then they pick into you, but... I feel like Tomb Kings is just not a faction that you pick first. Like, you basically always use them as a counter pick right now. And probably only for, like, three matchups. Um, yeah. I, yeah. There, there's some considerations there, though. And that's why, like, I'm not totally... I, I, I thought about doing it for this season of the South Sea Mercenary League, but I didn't really get the opportunity to, opportunity to test it out beforehand. So now I'm, like... Starting to think, okay, let's let's give this a shot in some King of the Hills. I'll probably do like a one-off flash tournament in the next few weeks at some point. Um, like, 
you know, just a couple days in advance, be like, hey, quick tournament, testing out unit ban rules, go through that, and then kind of see how that goes in, in a more standard tournament setting. But so far from these King of the Hill test games, I am liking this format quite a bit. The king has spoken and we obey. <laughs> yeah. Playing against Dark Riders of Crossbows. Made the fight a lot funner, even though I lost. Yeah, see? I, I like that. Testimonial here. From the source. Yeah. I do think I'll be going forward with this, and who knows? If it's really super successful, maybe we can even convince, like, Turin and some of the other tournament hosts to adopt the system. Maybe make it the standard sort of format for picking and banning. Does add a lot of new layers, yes. And f the thing is, I will say it is a little bit tougher for newer players to approach because they don't know which units to ban. Um, so, you know, it's an extra layer of something to have to learn, which could be a little bit intimidating for new players. But, I, uh, like, for players who are familiar with the game, who are, you know, maybe experienced tournament players a little bit, but maybe jaded, let's say, or worn out on the way th that things currently operate, I think it could really appeal to them. Nice charge right of these Swordmasters in the front. Manticore also dropping down. Uh, the Forsaken kind of layering in behind the Chaos Knights. Uh, so they don't just get absolutely face-rolled by Swordmasters. But so far, pretty good stuff. The High Elves, uh, Fireborn's able to stop up this Manticore in the back line. Should be able to take him out fairly quickly. Uh, the Archers are getting a little bit inundated here. But these Swordmasters got into combat with some Forsaken without having gotten charged. And they just ripped them to shreds. That's absolutely no chance. They are going to take a charge now, though. Did get the stand your ground just in time. They go up to 72 melee defense. That just about negates the entire charge bonus of the Chaos Knights. They still have 42 attack um, at the end of the day. But, yeah, that is... I mean, it definitely helps that stand your ground. Don't get me wrong. Uh, regrowth on these uh, Dragonborn as well. Uh, Fireborn, rather, as they charge the Chaos Knights Blances. But here comes the final transmutation. This will be quite devastating. It does look like they are in the area of effect. No, it actually did not hit the Fireborn. Wow, that is big. That is absolutely huge. The Fireborn did not get hit by their area of effect. It is going to finish off the Sea Guards and the Archers. Do some damage to the Spearmen as well. But those Fireborn getting out of that engagement. That being said, they are followed up on by the Chaos Knights. Marauder Great Weapons as well. Trade very cost-effectively there. Uh, yeah, Big Bird just terrifying away a lot of the High Elf units at this point. Balance Power still pretty close because Tyrion's pretty healthy, but a lot of stuff is just running to the hills. You can see uh, that uh, the combination of the Chaos Knights and the Marauder Great Weapons easily able to overpower the uh, Fireborn here. Chaos Marauder Great Opens just so cost effective right now. They went from being like arguably useless unit to being one of the best units for Warriors of Chaos and Norska uh, to fight cavalry with uh, kind of overnight, to be honest. And they made that mass change. <laughs> yeah, it was it was definitely fun and and. Uh, yeah, like you said, it's uh, first time jumping in a long time. I know I get super rusty playing, and, you know, I don't play as much as I used to just because I don't want to burn myself out in the game. I still want to be able to enjoy casting and making content for you guys, and I'll play maybe, I don't know. I, don't, I wouldn't even say it necessarily that I play, like, a multiplayer match every day. I do watch replays every day, like, at least, like, four or five replays every day because people send me a lot of replays. Which is great. I really appreciate that. You know, I get some really good ones sent to me. Um, I'll play probably like four or five days a week, honestly. Play some multiplayer games, at least one or two. Um, when I have patron practice sessions, I'll play, you know, up to like two to three hours, sometimes more, with patrons on a, on a given day. So then I get like some really quality practice time. And that's, you know... Not always super competitive meta builds, but often it's, you know, experimenting, learning, trying out different things, coaching, which for me, like, coaching also helps me get better, because I, like, will see mistakes that I'm making, you know, and sort of sometimes my patrons will do things and, and you know, teach me things. <laughs> it's also, honestly a super awesome kind of exchange. I, I At least I feel like it is, and hopefully all my patrons feel the same, but... <laughs> Uh, 
What are you supposed to do when you join now? Well, you could always do the same thing, but, you know, different. Um, credit to Falcon there, though. It was, a, it was a definitely an attempt. Uh, the Swordmaster is even despite everything, he's still got some pretty good value. Um, but look at these Marauder Great Weapons, man. Like, 600 plus on all of them. Just awesome. Forsaken also doing decently. Chaos Knights contributing. Great build from Dactor. Worked out more or less as intended. So, fun stuff. Go full Rohan, yes. That was a good one. GG indeed. Let's switch on over to Prague. And we'll get Ryder of Rohan in here. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Good stuff. Fun game. <laughs> Chaos Snowman still. Ban Feral Manticore and Hell Cannon. Still no Sigvald ban. That's fun. I mean, I get it, you know. Feral Manticore and Hell Cannon, both very strong units that are deserving of bans. I feel like you can kind of work around the Hell Cannon here, but I definitely understand. Hmm. Doctor says, big think. You know, what he could do is just be mean and ban Swordmasters and, I don't know, like Silverhelms for Rider Rohan. <laughs> that would be cruel. Hmm, I see. Okay. Ban Larry and White Lines. <laughs> Ryder Rohan doesn't mind at all. Okay, just checking some things over here on the side. Don't worry about me. Go ahead and ready up on my end. Just getting ready. Yeah, I'm going to have some good stuff for you guys this week. Got some tons of replays. I'm going to be going out of town at the end of June, so I'm starting to kind of gather some replays together, get some replays done kind of out in advance. Um, yeah. I mean, it's not until, like, I believe the 26th or 27th that I'm leaving. So I'll be gone for maybe, like, five days or so. Kind of depends. Some of it depends on, actually, the Beastman, uh, Lizardman early access, when that will be coming. Um, I don't know yet, actually, but... <laughs> can tell you that once I can tell you my schedule, I will. So, yeah. I don't have any more info yet.
So let's see what these guys can do. Doctor here readying up. Ready up once again here. I haven't even been playing music on this interlude. Ugh. Ugh, getting getting old, guys. Went to an amusement park the other day and did some roller coasters, and uh, I felt slightly motion sick. Definitely felt like an old man. You know, never used to happen to me when I was young, but these days... These days it happens <laughs> occasionally, it seems. Oh man, like I went to Universal Studios a couple months ago, and... There's that Harry Potter motion ride there that makes me want to die a horrible, painful death for motion sickness. Never used to happen, but it's one of those things. One of those things. Anyway, we're here now. And I would expect and do see some Swordmasters here. What is this? Triple Swordmasters. We've got Tyrion on foot, a light caster, uh, some archers, a whole bunch of silver helms, some spearmen, and a flame spoiler phoenix. Uh, looks like we're up against uh, Prince Sigvald. Got a Sorcerer of Shadows. Uh, Words with great weapons, mirror guard, Words with great weapons, couple of chaos chariots, marauder horsemen, horse masters mixed. The chariots are an interesting one. Chariots are in a little bit of a rough place right now. This used to be one of my favorite units on the chaos roster, was this kind of cheaper chariot. It was very cost effective for the damage that you could get out of it, but since the mass changes especially, it hasn't been very good. And even then, like before the mass changes, it just seems like it's not as good as it used to be. In game one, I use this thing all the time, but these days not so much. We'll see how it does here. Let's see what they got. GG Falcon, thanks for joining. Always appreciate the participants. Man. Mirror Guard. I wonder if these guys are going to get moved to, like, Warriors, or, uh, the Slanesh faction, rather. Same with Sigvald, because they are just very clearly Slanesh, right? There's no question about that. They got the symbols on the shields and everything, so I'm curious to see what they do with them. Ryder Rohan kind of pushing forward slightly. Got this big old position here. Definitely in danger of getting outnumbered. These Swordmasters are going to have to win pretty quick in individual engagements. Swordmasters shuffling. Man, that like speed shuffle when they had the Perona's time warp in that one replay. I was actually like dying of laughter while I was making that. Um, just because, yeah. Uh, their hilarious little shuffle just makes me so happy. Anyway. Here comes the Baronis Time Warp. That is going to do an insane amount of damage here. Even with the Penumbral Pendulum, the uh, Swordmasters probably still win this engagement. We'll see. But uh, in the front line here, Warriors of the Crippens and the Shadow Sorcerer also jumping in to contribute some extra, extra splash attacks is actually the right idea. Uh, Sigvald's taking some significant damage here, though, from Juiced Up Tyrion. Look at this. It's tearing up to 107 melee attack. And also, obviously, Swordmasters right now at least have a full surround on Sigvald. They're getting consistent attacks on him. Sigvald just getting absolutely dumped on. Uh, Swordmasters do break through, beat down the... Uh, oh, man, they just straight up shatter those Chaos Warriors with great weapons. And it does look like, even with the Chariots, like I said, these Swordmasters probably going to end up winning out against the Mirror Guard. Hard to say the Chariots do get a nice little rear charge there. Nice splash attacks uh, over on the far side. More of great weapons following up. And in the back line... The uh, Chaos Unit's definitely making a shambles out of what remains of the High Elf Army. But look at this, Sigvald's been broken, the Shadow Sorcerer's been broken. Rider of Rohan really needs to follow up with the Phoenix or even the Caster or something. One of these mobile units, I guess the Caster's not actually on a horse. So yeah, definitely follow up with the Phoenix and just make sure that Sigvald doesn't come back and regenerate. If he comes back and regenerates, Chaos could potentially get back in this battle. As it is right now, they're doing a great job of cleaning up all of this supporting element here. It's going to be just literally Tyrion and some Swordmasters left, plus uh, Phoenix, which could be dangerous. As some of these Chaos units start to rally, the High Elves don't really have enough pressure to keep chasing everything. So... Zinch, maybe. We'll see. I'm, I do think that we'll get Warriors of Zinch, yes. And, uh, like, you know, stylized Warriors of Zinch. There's some art of Warriors of Zinch that's amazing. I don't know. 
you know, like I know there's like the noise marines, like a thousand suns. Maybe they'll do something stylistically similar to that, although those are, are more specifically like 40k things, it has to be said. But uh, anyway, Tyrion's going to continue to hold out here. Uh, things have somewhat turned around as the Warriors of Chaos were able to rally a lot of their troops back together, like I said. But at the same time, the Elves also rallying here with some Spearmen, Archers, Silver Helms coming back. The Chariots are going to push out and try and get on that. Uh, Tyrion's pocket, though, is still quite healthy. We've still got Swordmasters here, Light of Battle on them to make them unbreakable. Uh, the Warriors of Chaos not exactly following up with overwhelming melee pressure, but they've got a lot of missile units here just dumping javelins. Also following on the Silver Helms here. Uh, yeah, Silver Helms trying to get some contact on the Marauder Horsemen. They will eventually make some charges home here and get some damage in. The Great Weapons very quickly following up, though. You can see the Phoenix kind of wobbling around Sigvald. In Game 3, the, the Flamesfire Phoenix is actually going to be very good against Sigvald because it will lower the amount of self-healing that he gets by 50%. So, yeah, we'll see what happens here. Definitely looking forward to that uh, fire mechanic sort of nerfing healing in Game 3. I think that will be an awesome change. Light of Battle, right? You don't see that spell too often. Some people say it's useless, but anything that gives you Unbreakable can situationally... You know, on-demand breakable can be very, very strong uh, in the right circumstance. Oh man, look at these Marauder, Mar uh, sorry, Chaos Warriors though, just running from Tyrion and the uh, Swordmasters here. Phoenix also charging in, getting an attack on the Chariot there, gets a splash. At this point though, Dactor is doing what he should, which is to try and kite, use up the rest of the ammunition on his horsemen. He's still got a lot of horsemen left. A lot of ammunition left on them, so just continue to plink away here at the uh, Swordmasters. Eventually, it will be just Tyrion and the caster, and once Sigvald uh, regenerates, and as he continues to regenerate, this balance of power will tick more and more in the Wood Elves' favor. So, or, sorry, uh, <laughs> Chaos' favor. Wood Elves are not even here. Anyway, I'm a little tired, guys. Uh, fun stuff. One more light of battle here to make this spear unbreakable. That doesn't mean make them unkillable, but it does mean they won't rout. So they're going to stand up and get some attacks back. Tyrion rushing in. Uh, the, uh, Mage also rushing in here. Maybe should have saved that light of battle right now for the Flamespire Phoenix, because I believe if you have that unbreakable... Uh, no, actually, maybe I'm thinking of the unkillable thing, but it does get the healing proc there. Look at that. Massive amount of healing. Will it actually come back from Rout, though, is the question? Probably. Oh, man, those Javelins do hurt, though. Flamesfire Phoenix, only 30 armor. Pretty squishy at the end of the day. But, uh, will it rally? Hard to say. Big old melee engagement over here. Tyrion and his caster getting surrounded by Sigvald. Does Tyrion get Heart of Avalorn? Excuse me, proc? Or will he just hit army losses first? Upgraded Enfeebling Foe. He does get the healing proc, but not before he routes. Typical Tyrion. Um, Light of Battle used on the caster makes her unbreakable. Unfortunately, it does not bring Tyrion actually back from route. If he were to return from route, he would stay unbreakable, but does not actually return from route. And that is going to be the end for the High Elves. Burst healing is intense, yeah. Some people say that Tyrion is, you know, OP because of the burst healing, and I would say not, um, considering he can get routed or die during that time. But, yeah, Sigvald back to full HP is, is the end. I think if Ryder Rohan had detached the Phoenix there to either finish or chase Sigvald off, could have potentially turned out differently. It was going to be tough, though. In Warriors of Chaos, even with all those units broken and routed, still outnumbered the Hiles pretty significantly. So just, uh, you know, going with this narrow build here with the three Swordmasters plus the Phoenix is quite a lot. If you're only looking for terror, it's arguable, you know, just take another caster with only Aspect of Dread Knight or something, and then you can go a little wider, maybe with some more Silver Helms. But, you know, it's uh, why they play the games, right? And your turn, Loopy. This will be the last match for today, Doctor. Very clearly going to be the winner. Not that, you know, I really keep score on my King of the Hills too much. But 
Can Loopy knock him off his throne, or will he go the distance all the way to the end? Let's have a look. Let's find out. Lower the gates. Yes. Best game ever. Anyway, we'll do Troll Country. Nice quick one. <laughs> Zero kills. Only 2300 damage. Yeah, makes sense. You know, slapping Tyrion around. Ah, uh, fun stuff. <laughs> Sigvald, man. Sigvald was so terrible for so long. And now he's, like, actually good. And I'm okay with that, at least for some time. I do think eventually they should nerf Sigvald back into the ground. But, you know, it's fun for units to have their day. Units and lords and whatever, to have their day in the sun. A lot of units have, and then been nerfed just straight up into the dirt. Um, and I'm expecting that will at some point happen to Sigvald, or maybe not. Maybe they'll just leave him how he is, but... Yeah. <laughs> Sigvald is actually secretly very strong. Oh, big sad. Big sad chaos. Too bad we don't have the, uh, whatever, the Everwatchers Horde playable in multiplayer, because that's a pretty cool color scheme, too. It's just, like, white chaos, basically. It's fun. It's a good time. I don't know, is that is the color scheme actually different on the units, though? I guess I've never looked at that. And, like, the weird chaos sub-factions that are running around the map, like, I... I, I yeah. Getting tongue-tied, and also, I guess I've never looked at those units to see if they're just the standard Warriors of Chaos color scheme. Like, I've never actually paid attention. I'm assuming they are, but maybe that's a big assumption. I don't know. Like, Vashnar's Conquest, I think, is the same, right? Like, black and gold color scheme, so, I don't know. What do you guys think? Let's see. Chaos Warriors and Chaos Knights. Oh, whoops. Lances. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, the skink on the on the blowpipe 50 is one of my favorites. <laughs> Ban shadow warriors and shadow walkers. Oof. Ouch. Oh man, ban the the sub factions unique unit. That's just rude. That's just cruel and unusual, Mr. Doctor. The the fun thing is to play Nagarith and then um And then take like a rush build and not even take any ranged units. Ah, I've done that a couple times. Or like you take uh, Sartosa and then just take a standard Vampire Coast build and not take any Sartosa infantry. You know, the sub faction mind games are definitely a thing. Like, uh oh, gonna play Averlorn, might see trees. JK, no trees, not even a Lariel, it's actually just an Archmage. And, you know, regular Ohio Farmy.
Thank you so much, though, for coming out, guys. Got quite a few games. Been some shorter games today. That's okay. Sometimes it do be that way. And people are still kind of exploring this new rule set. But I do think I'm going to do this again. Might have another King of the Hill later on a weekday this week. Uh, Wednesday night would probably be a, a good bet. Um, and then... Yeah, probably a week from today, next Sunday, we'll actually, for real this time, I promise, totally pinky promise, we will do the South Sea Qualifier number three, and then I might schedule Qualifier number four for the following Wednesday, so that we can get the final out of the way the weekend of, like, the 19th to the 20th. But we'll see, we'll see kind of how things go. Ready, ready. Already up on my end. Looking good, looking good. All right. What will they do? What will they do? That is the question. Maybe we see some Power Sword Chaos Knights from Doctor here since the lances were banned. Maybe we see just Gore Beast Chariots? Gore Beasts are actually okay right now. I actually really like Gore Beasts. Um, and I saw Korn, it seems, is going to have a unit of Gore Beasts just available in his roster. From what we saw in one of the screenshots that Creative Assembly released. Creative Assembly and Games Workshop, to be honest. I've done a video on the Gore Beast Chariot in the past, so I don't know if I'll do another one, but I think I've covered basically all of the armor-piercing, like, high-tier chariots. Oh, look at this line of Chosen! Look at this! Chosen with shields. We've got three Chosen with shields, two Chosen great weapons. Dactor going all in this time. He's got Marauder Horseman Masters mixed once more, and Sarthrail, the Ever Watcher. On the side of Nagarith, we've got a High Archmage up in the air, Swordmasters of Hoeth, three of them once again, Lothran Seaguard, Dragon Princes, and Dragon Princes. So, can three Swordmasters beat five Chosen? That's what we're going to find out today. My bet is a no, but we'll see. Chosen are more expensive than Swordmasters, and I would expect them to win at least the great weapons in a head-to-head -head fight, but we'll see. Look at these. Look at that helmet. I love the chaos aesthetic. Kind of silly in a way, but whoop, they're moving. Chosen! Yes. <laughs> their tower shields and their great helms and their hulking pauldrons. Full plate. Even got some wicked sabatons, although it's kind of hilarious, like the pauldrons are always way over the top in fantasy games, but to be honest, these sabatons, they're boots, those of you guys unfamiliar with the term, they're metal boots, aka sabatons, these are like pretty tame compared to, especially in the feet department, like real world, like late, like 14th, 15th century sabatons look ridiculous. They have like these gigantic long points coming off the toes. It's kind of interesting. Like in <laughs> fantasy games, often the armor is more over the top than in real life, but for whatever reason, the sabatons, I guess kind of because they look pretty dumb. Um, these ones like they have a they have a spike on the front, but it's not anywhere close to real life. <laughs> Just something to think about. Uh, yeah, uh, let's see here. Loopy's gonna kind of obliquely shift and try and not take a direct face engagement with the Warriors of Chaos. This is a pretty smart idea. You're gonna force yourself into an overload situation, but at the same time, you know, you're gonna be able to potentially get some more even engagements here on this, uh, exposed side. So I actually like this tactic quite a bit. Lothar and Seaguard just kind of here to fend off this, honestly, this volume of horsemen. They kind of spread out and charge from different directions. Will kill just the one Lothar and Seaguard, but Dragon Prince is standing at a comfortable distance, able to reinforce here. Nicely done so far. Big old charge on the Dragon Princes. Both the Dragon Princes are going to get hit by this final transmutation, though, and it does also hit Swordmasters, does it? No, it does not hit the Swordmasters, even though the effect looks like it did. And it did only hit the one Dragon Prince, so that's not the worst. 
does hit those Swordmasters for some of the uptime, but definitely could have been a worse uh, situation. Nice counterpunch, though, from Loopy, or from Dacta, rather, to break up Loopy's uh, kind of favorable situation there. Swordmasters getting involved with the Chosen on this side. Uh, Lothar and Seagar do eventually get wrapped up, as I said, but the uh, Dragon Princes will kind of cycle in and out there, try and make some difference. Dragon Princes, though. Oh, three Dragon Princes, actually. This is intense elite builds here. Not something you see every day, but I definitely like it. A little bit of apotheosis to help sustain these Swordmasters here as they get Javelin from the back and are going to be losing that engagement probably pretty decisively, but we'll see. Uh, Archmage trying to get the Dragon Princes here back. Dragon Princes here staying in combat maybe a little bit too long, but at the same time, they're just fighting Chosens, regular Chosens. They're not taking too much damage there. Uh, not having to face any great weapons. Chosen Great Weapons over here actually getting dragged out into the open field and kind of cycle charged and shot to death. Which is not great. The Dragon Princes do need to stay moving though. They're gonna, looks like they're going to get caught up on the charge by the Chosen. That's not ideal for them by any means. Swordmasters over here still fighting. Big Bird does terrify these Swordmasters away. The Chosen should be able to mop them up. But uh, nice back and forth so far. Really no one's game yet but the tuxedo princes man i love the black and gold color scheme on these dragon princes they just look so classy especially fighting warriors of chaos too it's almost like a slate blue in a way in this lighting but yeah nagarith dragon princes charging in just staying on the move as much as possible exactly what they should be doing they don't want to get caught in prolonged combat against Especially the Great Weapons, but even the regular Chosen, I mean, their armor and their melee defense means they're not going to take a lot from each cycle charge. Yeah, especially in comparison to most other units in the game. So the Dragon Princes, especially because of that, just have to keep cycle charging. And it's going to take more charges than it would on just about any other unit in the game. But it will still be effective over time. Nice little soul quench there. Doing a little bit of damage to those Chosen. Hiles punching admirably here, and the, keeping the Lothar and Seaguard alive has been pretty key as well. Uh, they're starting to run out of space to kite into, though, so let's see what they can do here. Big Bird going to rear charge these Lothar and Seaguard just before they caught the uh, Marauder Horsemen, but the Marauder Horsemen do get side charged bear, there by some Tuxedo Princes. That's going to be quite devastating. Big Bird will take some damage from the Seaguards in melee, but not too much. Um, but the Dragon Princes here just kind of forcing away all these Marauders. Uh, the Chosen also pushing forward all of the Chosen. There's still one more Swordmaster left as well, so very pitched, but things are looking pretty good for the High Elves right now. Uh, most of the Chosen has been worn down by attrition. This is not good, though. Taking damage on the caster on the High Archmage here will tilt the balance of power back towards Warriors of Chaos, so gotta be careful about that. Quite a bit of value there to be lost. Bitbird coming in, and uh, with the support of these Chosen, obviously he's gonna win this fight, but uh, the Swordmasters are close. More Apotheosis on the Tuxedo Princes here, who looked like they were going to go for one more big rear charge, but in fact, they're going to push out and continue to harass these Marauder Horsemen, bleed away models on them. Uh, the Swordmaster is doing okay right now. Looks like they're going to get uh, Soul Quench. Doesn't do too much friendly fire. Mostly hits Chosen there. More Seaguards trying to come into support, but the Terror does take hold of the Swordmasters, and... Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting the balance of power very wrong here. The Warriors of Chaos taking advantage on the balance of power uh, as the High Elves start to run out of units here. Uh, Dragon Princes, though, this is a pretty big charge in here to go after the Marauder Horsemen. They're not targeted on the Chosen, though, so will they actually do much damage to the Chosen? Doesn't look like they did hardly any at all, to be honest. Um, yeah, more Apotheosis here, probably trying at least to get some more Apotheosis for healing. Dragon Prince is also reuniting, trying to figure out how to pin these Marauder Horsemen. The white line is becoming a factor here as Big Bird is able to catch up Sea Guards and the uh, Swordmasters. So yeah, nice back and forth here. These Swordmasters still alive. They don't have any more am uh, the Horsemen they're chasing don't have any more ammunition though, so they just kind of multi-charge in here and should be able to finish the job. That may trigger army losses. I guess maybe not because we still have the two Dragon Princes here wheeling around. Did chase some units off there. <clears throat> right? What a heavy metal battle. Seriously. <laughs> Definitely has been. So at this point, it's the Dragon Princes and the Archmage versus the rest. And if if the Dragon Princes can get open charges on the Chosen, they could probably finish off the very tattered units here. 
Um, especially given the low vigor is debuffing their armor and everything. Granted, it's also, I believe, debuffing the charge bonus on the Dragon Princess here, but let's see as they close the distance. What targets will they choose to prioritize? <sighs> Any additional Winds of Magic definitely should be used on the uh, Dragon Princess to heal them here. But, oh, you see Dactor kind of forming up behind this little rock right here. I believe this does count as impassable terrain. Well, I guess we'll see if any horses run through it. But uh, Big Bird pushing out. Big Bird going to be kind of be acting as a blocker here. Full back, if you will, for those of you who know American football. Yeah, the Chosen, very, very valuable in this fight. And it looks like the Dragon Princes are directly targeting the Great Weapon. Stand Your Ground does get popped, though. Look at that 70 melee defense on these Great Weapons here means they take basically no damage from that charge. Um, and yeah, Dragon Princes very quickly get terrified by Big Bird. His magic damage and high weapon strength. I mean, not the best AP, but still enough definitely to... Uh... Oh man, and there's the back-breaking final transmutation. Actually does not even hit the caster. Only hits that one Dragon Prince and 100% will finish them off. Caster gets hit a couple times by Big Bird, and that should be game. Very well played to both. Dactor manages to hold on to his crown and get some serious Warriors of Chaos hype games. I do think Warriors of Chaos potentially could be quite strong in this format. Um, but yeah, great job by uh, Loopy as well. Fun build. Like this Triple Swordmaster, Triple Dragon Prince. It's a risky one, very, very narrow, but nearly actually pulled it off uh, against this very narrow, uh, Chaos build. Yeah, Chosen all racking up value, not quite paying for themselves, any of them. Big Bird, though, getting a ton of value. Big Bird's honestly the powerhouse here. And, uh, yeah, Marauder Horsemen get a ton of value as well. So, kind of interestingly enough, the Chosen actually just get killed. Funny, who would have thought? But, anyway, <laughs> uh, thanks, Zach, I, I appreciate it. They are, in fact, just a little bit of a minor hiccup this morning. Nothing really major. But, uh, just slept through some alarm alarms, but... <laughs> yeah, a lot of Warriors of Chaos. Uh, conquered Ulthuan today. Anyway, thank you all so much coming out it's been an absolute pleasure i am going to head off now big thanks again to the competitors all of you guys of course for joining and watching sashimi aka red wedding planner who we saw actually in the first game uh did get your message i'll pm you back um in just a moment here so again thank you all so much thanks to him for his patronage and i will see you guys all later